we're excited about this football season, uh, special teams wise. Um, we, uh, as you know, we started I think uh, two freshmen and a sophomore last year in our specialist department. So all those guys are coming back. Real excited about where they are right now. There's always a lot of improvement from your freshman year to sophomore year. So we look for a lot of improvement out of those guys. And the last thing I'll say before I take questions is uh, just the player depth. I mean, you know, going through the spring. Even right now, as we're looking at the depth chart, it, it's, I, I have a big smile on my face because there's a lot more depth there. Last year, we had some really good players up front, but they were also starters on defense, and but we had to rest them, and the depth wasn't quite as good, so I feel really good about that. So I'll open up the question to you guys right now. Yeah, Mike, team, start with Paul. Coach, obviously, uh, Tucker finished on a strong note last year. Yeah. Well, he, he mentioned about changing his, his routine and punting was – what did you see as far as what, as far as what made that difference in, in his improvement late last year? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is was experience. I, I think that you know he got out there his first year really to go out there and, and kick. I know he had I think one game the year before uh, field goal kicking, but just having a full year of it, um, and he uh, he just kept getting better. If you look at the bowl game; he had a tremendous game, to my opinion. Uh, flipped the field a lot in that ball game. O Ole Miss game he had a good game. Uh, Alabama game he had a good game. Uh, so toward the end of the year, he just started. It's, you know, you could say it was technique and things like that, but I, I really think a lot of it was just, you know, in, in, in his head and the experience part of it. Coach with uh, Coach with Marcus Murphy as a specialist, where have you maybe seen growth from him from year one to year two? Well, Marcus, uh, number one, uh, there's not many freshmen that come in and play like he did. He was one of my best cover guys on kickoff unit. Uh, great. He did, coming off the edge, made a lot of tackles. Uh, you don't see that. So, is he going to improve this year? Yeah, I think so because just that experience factor. He's just more confident in himself right now. A little wide eyed a little bit early in the year last year, but again, way ahead of most freshmen I've ever seen, talent wise and mentality wise. Coach, uh, you go out and you sign Corliss Waitman out before you saw an opportunity to improve competition in, in your room. Now that his availability is somewhat in question, how do you kind of adjust for that? Yeah, you know, right now we've got the three guys uh, that, are, that are fighting for, you know, with uh, Tucker and Reed and Cody. Um, you know, we're, what, we're, what we've told them is the guys that chart the best is going to be the guys that kick. And, you know, it's not because I like their mother or their father or, or uh, anything else. It's going to be because they're kicking well in practice. And it's an open deal. Uh, I think that uh, Tucker, obviously, he was a returning starter. So those other two guys are going to have to do well to beat, beat him out. Um, and so it's going to be a great competition. We've got, we got, we got much more talent from the top from one through three than, than we've had uh, from, from last year. You had another great transfer in, in Isaiah Zuber that, that had a big hand in special teams in Kansas State. Talk about where he fits in the mix in the return game and, and who's some of your main – Candidates on the return and kickoff return. Yeah, um, I, you know I've seen a little bit of his film. Obviously, we played those guys last year, and was and we kicking off to him was uh, you know we we tried to make sure we had a plan for that, so he's a good one. Uh, but we got Brian Cole, uh, who I think is as good as anybody. You know, we were really good early in the year when he then he got hurt, and we kind of lost a little bit there. Uh, so now having him and Isaiah. I'm assuming those two guys are, you know, going to be in the mix, obviously. And, and uh, you've got Marcus Murphy, who can return kicks. Uh, you've got uh, Malik Deer, who, who I thought came in last year and did a great job. He's got great hands. You know, he's a sure-handed guy. And so we've got, you know, the three really on each, the, the kickoff return game and the punt return game, and I think quality players. And so, which is, you know, a good bit different from last year after we lost Pico. I was going to uh... – Get a little more emphasis on, on Brian. When he went down last year, I think he was averaging over 20 yards of return. It was you know, significantly better than the next guy. Um, the loss of him, what did that do to your return game, you think, losing him, taking him out of the equation? And where do you feel like you are now with him in the return game? Yeah, I think that, uh, number one, I think he is a quality. He's a top SEC type returner. He's one of the guys, in my opinion, will be in the, in the top four or five guys in the, in, in the conference. That's, that's what kind of talent he has. It was a shame that he got hurt when he was show it the whole year. Uh, but when we lost him, obviously it was it was a drop-off. And, and uh, but 
And I think now we've got more depth. We've got guys that are coming in with Zuber, and, and uh, I think Marcus Murphy being a year older and, and that kind of thing. So I think we got, you know, you don't want a, your guy to return every kick because he's got to start at it. safety, and, and I understand the whole team concept deal. So we've got to rotate some returners. You know, we've got to get some guys in there and get them in there fresh. You know, he may be tired from the drive before that, so we have some depth. And so that's the biggest thing I've seen is we've got, we have more depth now. Coach, talking to Coach Shuthan, Coach Moorhead, others. You guys, you're one of a number of guys on this staff that has head coaching experience and a lot of it. How much do you think that has been able to maybe help Coach Moorhead in, early in his tenure? And when you were a head coach, did you have guys that were head coaches on your staff? And how much did that maybe help you? Yeah, so that's a good question. You know, first of all, I think Coach Moorhead doesn't need a ton of help. He's, he's a great football coach. Um, but, um, you know, from time to time, I'll go in his office and talk to him about things. And, and he asks, you know, he, he's, he's, he's not a, a – not a, too big of an ego guy where he's not going to have a uh, – he can't ask questions. So, uh, and, and as far as my career, uh, when I was getting into it, um, yeah, we had, some, we had some guys. Really, wasn't many head coaches that I hired early, um, but I had some guys with a lot. You know, Les Kenning, who coached here for years, uh, was a guy I kind of leaned on in the first six months that I had him before we even had a season, but then Mississippi State took him away from me. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, he, was, he was very knowledgeable and really helped me in the early years. Jace has kind of been the primary place kicker the last couple of years, but just how close is that competition going on in camp right now? Dead, e I mean, dead even. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Jordan Lawless has always been a very cap capable kicker. Um, I went here the first year when Jace kicked, and he had a great year. Uh, last year it was just, you know, when you looked at the numbers, they were about the exact same, so we kind of went with Jace because he you know, had been the guy before. And this year, I, I don't see much difference. And so I, it's, you know, we, we'll, you know, Coach Moorhead, of course, make that call. You know, he's the head coach. And, uh, but yeah, both those guys are very talented. And, uh, you know, we need to get both of them you know, a chance and get them on the field. You don't normally ask the special teams coach about replacing a kickoff coverage guy, but Chris Rayford made more plays <laughs> in special teams than almost anybody I've ever seen. Do you have a guy that can be, can sort of fill that role last year, the guy who gets down there and downs those kicks and, and, and creates field position? Yeah, um, we, Chris was a great one. Yeah, he was an excellent uh, gunner on punt, uh, great on kickoff. We look at, I'm not kidding you, we look at our de our gunner depth chart, and it's literally five deep on each side. We got ten guys we feel like go cover kicks on the punt position, um, the gunner position on punt. We feel great about that. So we have more guys can cover on kickoff. And, and so it's, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, just the whole depth of every unit. Uh, I feel really good about it. You know, going into last season, we knew that if, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so got hurt, or if they got tired, you know, that it was a drop-off from, from one to two. There's not near as much drop-off at all uh, right now. So, yeah, we do have a lot, a lot of guys in cover. Uh, but he was a good one. He, no doubt he made a lot of plays. Any other questions? All right.